Good morning folks and welcome to day four of the Cheltenham Festival quiz and uh, preview. I'm going to have ten questions relating to today's races, big focus of course on the Gold Cup itself um, and then we'll look back on the tips from yesterday and what I think about today's um, races uh, and my thoughts on that. Hope is did okay yesterday, as I say, we'll look back on that um, in a wee moment's time. Um, but let's get on with the quiz itself um, and see how you fare on this one. As I say, um, a lot of emphasis, of course, on the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Um, but first of all, let's see about the Triumph Hurdle and a question relating to that. Um, so which trainer, known more recently for his flat horses, won the Triumph in 2012 with Countrywide Flame? Which trainer, known more recently for his flat horses, won the 2012 Triumph with Countrywide Flame? And an exciting Triumph in prospect um, uh, this year, that's for sure. Um, and a uh, countrywide flame. I think it was quite a big price when he won. Um, when he won back in twenty twelve. As I say, with this, you can pause this, rewind it. Um, the answers will come up at the end of this after the thoughts on uh, today's races. Um, but you, as I say, you can give some thought to these at any time you want. So, question two: Which county hurdle winner? Went on to win the Group 1 Irish Ledger on the flat in 2016. Which county hurdle winner went on to win the Group 1 Irish Ledger in 2016? But if it's, was that a bit of a surprise when he did it? Um, well, I'll leave that for debate. I'm trying to remember his price. I know he, well, I'm not right. We order of St George, I'm sure he did. Anyway, that might give you a wee hint. Okay, so that was question two. Let's move on to question number three, quite naturally. In 2019, which future Gold Cup winner claimed victory in the Albert Bartlett? In 2019, which future Gold Cup winner claimed victory in the Albert Bartlett? Well, you've got two horses to pick for there, haven't you? <laughs> which one? I think it's quite obvious, yeah. So in 2019, which future Gold Cup winner claimed victory in the Albert Bartlett? Question number four. In which year was the Gold Cup at Cheltenham first run? In which year was the Gold Cup first run? So that's question four. In which year was the Gold Cup first run? Question number five. How many times did the great Golden Miller win the Gold Cup? How many times did the great Golden Miller win the Gold Cup? As a race, of course, named after him at the festival now. Well, you know, you don't know as much because of the sponsorships nowadays. Um, is it the tunnels that's registered as a Golden Miller? I think I said this yesterday or the other day in this vlog, but anyway. How many times did the great Golden Miller win at uh, the Gold Cup? Question number six. Who was the last amateur jockey to win the Gold Cup? Who was the last amateur jockey to win the Gold Cup? Excitement building for this year, so I'll give you my thoughts later on as to how I see the race panning out. I think it's pretty wide open, if I'm honest. Right, question number seven. Denman claimed victory in the 2008 Gold Cup and finished second the following three years. Which three horses finished ahead of him in each of those years? Denman claimed victory in, 2000, in the 2008 Gold Cup and then finished second the following three years. Which three horses finished ahead of him in each occasion? The great Denman. The tank. Powering up that hill in 2008. Um, what a performance that was. I, was. I think he was 70. Was he 71 that day? I may be wrong. I don't know. But anyway. He was very impressive. Question number eight. Moving away from the Gold Cup now. Which future Grand National winner won the Fox Hunters in 1981? Which future Grand National winner won the Fox Hunters in 1981? Got another question on the Fox Hunters because the Mayor's um, chase, uh, this is his only second year, and so there's no much history to that race at all. So it's question eight. Which future Grand National winner won the Fox Hunters in 1981? 
in question number nine, Nina Carberry won back-to-back -back fox hunters in 2015 and 16 on which horse? Nina Carberry won back-to-back -back fox hunters in 2015 and 16 on which horse? I remember being there in 2015 and no backing that um, and stoning there going, why? Why? When it won, this horse won it in the first, its first year in 2015. Anyway, but Nina, superb jockey, of course, won back-to-back -back fox hunters in 2015 and 16 on which horse? And your final question, question number 10, for some reason it's disappeared off the screen. We'll just get that back for you there, folks. I don't know, it's, 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 a funny, it's a funny thing who decides to do this. I'm a busy man. Right, question 10. In 2019, which jockey, son of a great trainer, won the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockeys Hurdle on board early doors? In 2019, which jockey, son of a great trainer, won the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockeys Hurdle, the last race on the card, on board early doors? Well, it is now the last race on the card. It used to be the Grand Daniel, didn't it? Um, and then they changed that around. So the professionals only really have one race after the, the Gold Cup now, don't they? Um, and there's not a massive field to the Mayor's chase this year. Um, so many of them will be off home after the 3.30. In fact, some of them may not even have a ride after the 2.50. Or the 2.10, but anyway. I've, I've noticed actually there's quite a lot of jockeys, big, quite high profile jockeys at Doncaster are faking them today. Um, well, somebody like Brian Hughes is not even, I don't think he's actually been at um, uh, Cheltenham this week. And Brian e. Frost, who's got a 19% um, strike rate, which I've seen today on Twitter, I think it was Tony, Tony Paley of the, the Guardian had mentioned that, and she's at faking them today. She's only had three rides at Cheltenham. Hmm. What's going on there? I think we all know, really, don't we? Ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on to look back at, as I say, I'll give you the answers um, to the the quiz after we look back on yesterday's action and ahead to today's. Looking back yesterday, um, the tips, not too bad. Um, but let's look at the first race, 138. Sheer luck that with Bob Bollinger, let's be honest, it was there for the taking for Galloping Deschamps. Um, and the poor thing, just the landing gear didn't come out properly at the uh, after jumping the last, and he went down. And Bob Bollinger looked a very beaten horse, even coming up the hill. Um, he seemed to have lost his action and everything. I thought, um, just was absolutely pulverized by Galloping Deschamps. Um, and Bob Bollinger couldn't live with it. Uh, I think there's more to come from Bob Ollinger, but it'll be interesting to see how he comes out of this race um, from yesterday. And Galloping Deschamps looks an absolute superstar if he can just get that jumping fixed, which I'm sure he will. So a bit of luck there in the 130. In the 210, um, sadly, Born Patriot, um, I've, I, I didn't get an update. To, sorry to know what really happened, but he yeah, had a really bad fall there in the attempts. Bally Andy faded, um, came back a bit at the end, if I remember rightly, um, ran on at the end but couldn't get into a place, so um, that was a disappointing effort. Um, there, 2.50, now, I was gutted with this one, um, if I'm being honest. Now, it was, went down to seven runners, as I said yesterday, and El Dorado Allen, who was around about 18-1, to was my fancy for an each way to finish in the places. Um and he took it to Alaho. Um, Alaho was outstanding, let's be honest. And I then, so I had, a, I still stuck it on each way. And then I put the forecast on with Alaho and El Dorado Allen. But he just tired at the end and lost second place. And I was fuming. But yeah, hey, I think Joe Tazard had mentioned prior to the race that he was, that they weren't going to hang about. And they were going to try and do what they can. You know, he's, he's won over a lot of uh, three miles so why not try and you know take it to Alaho and see where you go but he faded in the end but I'm sure they'll be delighted to finish third in a, in a, a grade one like that but anyway the 3.30 um, was a cracking race and uh, I think everybody's mentioned about how superb a, a ride it was by Danny Mullins on Flooring Porter stacked him up at the top of the hill and then at the last just boom came up the hill, saved that energy for the finish, and it was outstanding. So I'm 
really chuffed with that. 41 winner there for us. Paisley Park, I said, I, I definitely felt he was always going to um, get a place, and he did. He just got nabbed at, he just nearly got second place from Time Hill, but um, didn't look like it at the top of the hill as usual for Paisley Park. He was at his usual antics of off the bridle, pushed along by, by Aidan Coleman, but as soon as he gets to the foot of that hill, he seems to engine, you know, the engine seems to kick in and he knows where he is. So, brilliant performance by Paisley Park again for the, the old-timer um, to get a place as well. So, that was much appreciated. In the 410, the glancing queen had said about... Um, was going okay and then just tired near the end. Guy ended up being an on-runner um, there. 450, now, Party Central, it was a bizarre one because I was watching them all the way around and then as they came down the hill, coming towards the last, um, it looked like Jack Kennedy had a handful on Party Central and I was like, oh, good here, because the the, the big, you know, favourite Dino Blue was well beat by this stage, it looked like anyway. But as soon as he asked for an effort, the horse just didn't respond. So I, obviously Jack kind of knew, I've not got much going here. Um, but I'll look, you know, I'll kind of look like I'll put him on. Some of the shrewdies that might have been betting and running uh, might have been thinking, oh, aye. Um, but to me, um, I, I, I must admit, I was in that position myself, thinking, oh, God, he's going well here. And anyway, it never worked out. Um, and in the 5.30, we got a place with Mr. Coffee, who came in, shortened up in the odds. I think he went off as a co-favourite, um, Mr. Coffee, with um, Sam Whaley Cohen on board. Um, so finished second. Looked like, again, like Party Central, looked like Mr. Coffee was the one are all over um, coming to the, the, the last couple of fences but it just didn't work out that way Powerstown Park um, finished down the field but um, gave a good effort and account of himself at about 4 one um, just didn't work out in terms of getting into the, the places so not a bad day but a luck obviously in the first really chuffed with the 3.30 um, and then picking up a place at the end so let's look at today um, and what I'm going for here in the one thirty, the triumph. Um, uh, it's it really is. There's a lot of um, talk about um, who you know about Vauban and Pied Piper. Um, you know Gordon Elliott's other horse that, that, that's that, that's getting some money towards it as well. Um, but uh, 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 Pied Piper looked very impressive when winning at Cheltenham last time. Um, has beat Vauban, but Vauban then, it, I must admit, looked really impressive in its last run. Um, but I'm just going to come down on the side of Pied Piper. Um, I'm a bit, ooh, if, if I'm a wee bit, Gordon Elliott's form. Now, I know he's had two winners with um, Commander of Fleet, which we backed here on at 51. And, of course, Delta Work. But are they the really two? You know what I mean? He's won a Coral Cup and a, the cross-country chase. He's had some unf- Un, he's had some not great luck, you know, and conflated fell, of course, in the Ryanair yesterday. Um, but, you know, hey, uh, I, th- I think he's got a chance um, of getting his grade 1-1 one, one here with Pied Piper. In terms of an each way bet, Teddy Blue, um, I think he's around about 22-1 to one maybe. Um, he f- was going well in the Adonis um, and then absolutely battered the last hurdle to my frustration and uh, finished by night, was it night salute? who itself is in this race and um, it's got a bit of money, but I, th- I think if Teddy Blue had jumped that final hurdle, he would have probably went on and won. But anyway, that's my own opinion, but I think he's worth a wee, wee squeak here. Now, in the 210, the big uh, handicap of the day, well, one of the big handicaps of the day, the county hurdle. I've picked out three here. I think West Cork will go well for the Skeltons. had won the Greatwood, so um, still, I think, is well-weighted, um, well-handicapped to do well. First Street, I've had backed that a few times this year with some success. Um, so comes here going well. Nicky Henderson's horses are going really well at the moment. And Tritonic is an old favourite of mine. Ever since I've seen it run at Hamilton and the Glasgow Stakes behind Subjectivist, I've, I've, I've had a wee soft spot for it. Won a big handicap, of course, at Ascot just before Christmas, the old Ladbrook. Um, and uh, they, they won the two, uh, you know, they're going, the, I think Adrian Heskin said the, the tactics used in uh, the Betfair were just not right. You know, they, they ran too prominent there, so they'll change it. And I think it might work the Oracle here. So all three of them each way. 250 for the Albert Bartlett. I think Hillcrest is a beast of a horse and has done absolutely nothing wrong at all this season. Um, if you look at the times of his performances, uh, particularly the last time out at Haydock, outstanding. 
Um, and, you know, everybody keeps saying, oh, looks a chaser in the making, looks maybe a Gold Cup horse in the future. Um, yes, I like Hillcrest. I think um, it's my nap of the day, if I'm being honest. Um, but I will give a wee shout out to Bardenstown Lad, who won at Musselburgh uh, uh, during the festival trial weekend there um, back in February. Um, John McConnell's horse, I think it's got a great profile for this type of race and should run well at about 10 to 1. The 330, the Gold Cup itself, it's wide open, as I say. I'm going to go stick with Galvin, though. Um, it, it could turn out to be a really good day for Gordon Elliott, um, and he'll be hoping that Galvin can... can uh, he just stays all day, doesn't he? You know what I mean? There'll be no question about the trip um, for him. He's won, of course, the, the National Hunt Chase at, 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 uh, at Cheltenham, so that's no worry there. So I'm, for that, I think that... that you need that horse. Okay, I've heard others say you need a bit of pace as well, but I think Alvin's just got that touch of class. And you can't rule out Album Photo. I think he's around about 12 to 1. Two time um, uh, winner of this. He's only had one run this year. I, I accept that. And that's kind of the way that Willie Mullins treats the horse now. Um, but I think for running um, a big race, I think, again, he'll stay all day and he should be there nearly finish. Looking at the fox hunters, I don't follow the fox hunting chases much at all during the season. But I'll pick out to wing leader looks a real cla- uh, looks a horse with a plenty of form coming into this. And cousin Pascal has ran well in these fox hunting races this season, um, and should be worth an each way turn. And the four fifty con- concertista uh, for Willie Mullins and uh, Simon. M- uh, Simon Muneer's colours um, and Isaac Hayes uh, uh, Isaac Hayes this <laughs> great singer but anyway Concertista I think um, at a nice juicy price I think um, should run well there um, uh, taking to fence, uh, fences pretty well and yeah uh, Concertista and in the last um, now the 530 is always a, a, a particularly since it's now the Martin Pipe conditional jockeys wide open race plenty of runners you either go into this race going oh I've had a miserable day and you start picking oh, do you know I think that one's got a win and always gamble responsibly never chase it of course folks but you sometimes go into that race like that I'll stick a few wee quid on this one and what have you um, and or if you've had a good day you sometimes think oh good I'm going to approach this with um, some vim and vigour but I've picked out three five o'clock um, for uh, Willie Mullins and your man Richie Ritchie who's obviously <laughs> crying out for a bit of success here at the festival um, he's had some bad luck um, and five o'clock might turn these fortunes around um, although we've had our fingers burnt he's, he's been off the track for a couple of years I think now but you know we'll see Air of the Cotswolds I've, 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 had a, I've been hitting the post a few times with these Nigel Twist and Davies horses so I'm hoping that this one will pick up and party business low in the weights um, so might run a blinder uh, off the back of that so that's my three my th- for the last at Cheltenham Right, let's get to your answers for the quiz. We'll rattle through these. Um, question number one, which trainer known more recently for his flat horses won the Triumph in 2012 with Countrywide Flame? That's John Quinn. Always back John Quinn when in air. On. It's always one of those ones where if he's got one in the, a maiden or a novice stakes at air during the summer, bang, John Quinn. It always seems to send up decent ones. Anyway, question two. Which county hurdle winner went on to win the Group 1 Irish Sixth Ledger in 2016? That was Wicklow Brave. Question three. In 2019, which future Gold Cup winner claimed victory in the Albert Bartler? Of course, there was only two to pick from, and of course, it was Manila Indo. Question four. In which year was the Gold Cup first run? It was 1924. Um, Question five. How many times did the great Gold Miller win the Gold Cup? That was a remarkable five times. Question six, who was the last amateur jockey to win the Gold Cup? That was Sam Whaley Cohen on board Long Run. Uh, question seven, Denman claimed victory in 2008 World, uh, World Cup Gold Cup and finished second the following three years. Which three horses finished ahead of him? Cato Starr in 2009, Imperial Commander in 2010 and Long Run in 2011. Uh, question eight, which future Grand National winner won the Fox Hunters in 1981? That was Grittar, who claimed the Grand National the following year. Um, question 9, Nina Carberry won back-to-back Fox Hunters in 2015 and 16 on which horse? That was on the fringe. 
and question 10 in 2019 which jockey son of a great trainer won the Martin Pike conditional jockeys hurdle on board early doors I think it was for Joseph O'Brien but um, John Joe O'Neill Jr of course there for that one so that's your quiz answers there folks and that is it for Cheltenham Day 4 I hope you have a brilliant day um, and it proves profitable for you all um I'll go back with a couple of the recent quizzes um, for the Grand National, in fact. Um, we'll do that, uh, which is now a few weeks away. In fact, the Scottish Grand Nationals before it on the 1st of April. Um, no joking. Um, yes, it is this year. So uh, I'll be back for that. So keep an eye out on social media with regards to that. Best of luck today, folks. Let's hope for some profitable victories.